Football Friday night. It's the final game of the regular season as the Effingham Flaming Hearts are in Highland to play the Bulldogs. I'm Greg Sapp, Dustin White alongside. Caleb Moody is here, Gail Warner back at the studios. And it's senior night here at Highland, but they've already had their halftime show, their senior night observance, as it were. The band's moving on to the field, and we're just about ready for high school football. Last game of the regular season, man. I always say football goes fast. This year's no, no exception. No exception, but uh, it doesn't feel like the last week of the season. No. Usually a little bit colder by now, but uh, it's a really nice day outside. Good evening for football. A nice facility here at Highland and uh, a really good opponent that Effingham's going to be dealing with tonight. Uh, Effingham already got that fifth win last week, which is a relief because you didn't want to have to come in to face this Highland team needing that fifth victory. But uh, all things equal, uh, you, you'd sure like to get a sixth win, but it's going to be a tall task here tonight. Highland 7-1, and one, the Hearts are 5-3, and three, so we'll see what happens here tonight. The band's out on the field, so... Let's go ahead and take a break. We'll have more pregame information for you in 90 seconds. Having Ammon Highland on 97.9 XFM. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at GecknerBros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Allen High School just completed the playing of our national anthem. So we're just a couple of minutes away from tonight's play-by-play -play here on 97.9 XFM. We will mention a couple of things I want to be sure I get in while I have the opportunity. We have a lot of sports that are in the process of wrapping up, and that includes girls tennis. And we had one more player from either side of the creek still in action today, and that was the only person that was competing in singles. And she, unfortunately, lost in the fourth round. And congratulations, though, on making it to state for Emily Kowalki of St. Anthony. She lost 6-3-6-0 today, so she went 2-2, two and two, and that ain't A. So congratulations to Emily. We had three doubles teams from Effingham or St. Anthony or Tadopolis that competed as well, so congratulations to all those individuals on a job well done. Hart's going to kick off, which means they'll get the ball to start the second half. That's worked pretty well this season. Armando Estrada ready to kick off. You're listening to 97.9 XFM, WXEF and Effingham, and he smokes it again, and it's taken at the one by Highland. They run it up the middle of the field. He's out across the 30, and the Hearts finally take him down at about the 38-yard line. Heck of a return. Yeah, just going cut right through the middle of the field was Dylan Beadle, number nine, a junior on this team, and he got it all the way out across the 30-yard line, in fact, closer to the 40. Took it right at the one, maybe even the half. Returned it to the 38, so it's first and 10 for, at, for uh, Highland at their 38-yard line. That's how this one gets started. Glad to have you with us here on 97.9 XFM. Their quarterback, Wubbles, is going to work from the shotgun on first down. High snap, but he got it. Pass out in the flats. And a gain out across the 40 to about the 44-yard line. Taken down by Estrada. He got some help from Heil. Well, Beadle took the kickoff, and he receives the first pass just along the left sideline there. Nothing fancy, just a short little pass, but it's uh, good for more than half of the yardage they needed there on first and ten. Yes, sir. Gain of six, so it's second and four. The ball at the 44-yard line. So a good kickoff return, and now a pretty successful pass. They pitch to the outback, and he gets away from a couple. He is shy of the first down, I think as the Hearts reacted well after some initial getting after it. Josh Kelly's in on the stop, and it's a gain out across the 45 to the 47. 
So a gain of three, so that should make it third and one. Travis Porter took that run. He averages more than seven yards a carry this season. Hand off up the gut. They have the first down to midfield. The Hearts drive them back, but not before they get the first down. It's a gain right to the midfield stripe. So a gain of three, and that's enough for Highland first down. So Highland got the ball first. They're making the most of it here as this is the last game of the regular season. Hopefully we have two or three more games, maybe four. There's a pass again out in the flats. Again, it's complete to Beetle, and he gets to about the 46 before the heart's taking down. London Wrinkles in there. Also, Fox is in there, Spencer Fox. And it's a gain to the 46. Brody so. Lewis on the reception there for Highland, a four-yard pickup. It's still in the shotgun. There's the hand. Nope, they kept it with the quarterback, and the heart sniff it out, and a great job by Charlie Ring to stay home, and they lose yardage. In fact, well, they're going to give him a yard, as it turns out. A gain to the 49. I take that back. That's a loss of three from the 46 to the 49. So it's third down and nine. Stand in the shotgun, got a man in motion, going to the right side of the field. Looking to pass. Across the middle, it is caught. Beetle caught it, and he's inside the 30, close to the 35-yard line. Plenty enough for a Highland first down. Brody Lewis again on the reception, so another first down for Highland. Number one, Brody Lewis with a couple of straight catches, and uh, Wubbles is three for three passing that. Gain of 14 from the 49 to the 35. Highland on the march on their first possession. They're going to throw again across the middle, and it's incomplete. The return, the uh, receiver tried to dive for it, but the side official waves it off. Incomplete pass stops the clock with 9.36 to go in the opening quarter, and it brings up uh, second and ten. Brendan Jelly was the intended receiver over the middle there, and, yeah, that pass was just left a little short for him. He was wide open, but... Uh, just the uh, throw was not quite on the mark. High snap again. They're going to run it. The quarterback keeps, and he's got a big gain, and he's loose, and he got away from everybody, and the hearts dive at him. Hit, hit him. Touchdown, Iowa. Some people dove. Some people grabbed. Nobody could catch him. And a nice job by Wubbles of taking it in. Gain of 35 yards, and it's 6-0 Island. They'll go for one on the kick. Nobody could get a handle on him. And it's 6-0 Bulldogs. They will kick for one here. Waiting on the snap. There it is. There's the placement. Kicks up. Looks good. It is good. 7-0 Highland, 9.26 to go opening quarter. Back with a kickoff to the Hearts in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Nice drive by the Bulldogs to open this game. Here's the kickoff from the 40. High end over end. The Hearts take it at the 11 or 12. It bounced and it's picked up and a good return up the gut out to the 30-yard line. So a nice return. That's Caden Lewis. And he got it out to the 30. So Caden Walls with the return took it at about, what, 11 or 12, Dustin? Out to the 30. Let's see about where they sit it down. Yeah, right on the 30. So that'll be where the Hearts set it up first and 10. 9.20 to go in the opening quarter. 18-yard return for Caden Walls. And Effingham going to have some work to do. They are behind early. Eight plays, 62 yards, 234 on the drive. Highlighted by the Wubbles touchdown, 35-yard run. They throw out in the flat here, two walls. And Caden might have got a yard or two before they take him down. Short game. A lot of con took, took some hits afterwards. 
Call it three from the 30 to the 33 at second and seven. Yeah, Highland went down the field and scored their first possession. Hart's turn at bat now. Yeah, Highland ran the ball effectively, uh, passed it as well. Just uh, gave you a lot to think about. Pontius up under center. There's the handoff. Weldon Dunstan on his feet. Got it to the 35, maybe across the 35. Let's see about where they sit it down. Dunstan to the 35. So a gain of two, and it's third and five. Nose of the football just across the 35-yard line. Third and five, we'll call it. Arts would love to sustain this drive. Well, with Highland putting points on the board, their first possession. Carter Bushu out here to the near side along with Lutz. Go to the shotgun now. Pontius has him set. There's the snap. He's going to run it. He's got a good head of steam up, and he dives forward and gets the first down. Yeah, I think he did get it, that last effort there, pushing it out across the 40, and that's going to be enough. So from the 35, Pontius gains to the 42, a gain of seven yards, and the new set of downs for the Hearts. Well, you like to see that, you know, get a, get a drive put together. Your defense, you know, just had a tough possession. Uh, they got a lot to think about on the sideline there, so you keep your offense on the field for a little while, let them catch their breath over there. Up under center now on first down, handoff, Dunstan, nice job of getting away from one man, doesn't get away from the next four, though, that take him down. They may call it no game. Yeah, trying to find that edge, and it just never came for him before the black jerseys did. Uh, trying to turn it upfield along the right side, and just no room to go. And yeah, line of scrimmage is uh, same, so no gain on the play. Still at the 42, second and 10. Again, Coach Hefner told us on the post-game show he thinks, regardless of the outcome tonight, that the Hearts are in as far as the playoffs. Again, we'll know that tomorrow night. There's the snap, handoff to Dunstan up the gut, and he's just out across the 45-yard line. So a gain of three or four. Yeah, they just put the nose of the football out across the 45, so a gain of three. And it's third and three. Well, no, I take that back. It's third and seven. A bit of a delay handoff there up the middle for Dunstan, and his blockers were able to create a little bit of space for him. But, uh, boy, these... These Bulldogs players, their defense converges quickly on the football. They make those adjustments and go and get them. It's, it's going to be a tough night to run the ball. I can see why they're 7-1. and one. <laughs> From the shotgun now, there's the handoff. And he didn't hand off. Pontius kept, and he might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but that's all, and it's going to be fourth down. Pontius went right up the gut, and there just was no room there. What, half a yard? If that, trying to run the same play they ran on third down before, uh, which was effective, but uh, this time doesn't work out. And with fourth and seven and still not quite to midfield, Pontius is going to try his hand at punting. So they were able to get some yardage when they went to the left side of center, that time the right side of the center, and nothing happened. So Pontius will kick it away at about the 35. Good high snap. He puts some foot into it. Holy moly. It's caught at about the 12 and juggling and trying to jockey his way away. There's no chance of that. We've got two flags as there was extracurricular activity here at about the 45-yard line. Miles Maxiden for the Hearts is there with Pontius and the player for Highland were tangling. So let's sort this all out. It's a 42-yard punt for Pontius, so it was a good kick, despite the snap being not, uh, not terrific. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I wondered whether we might have offsetting penalties and no harm, no foul, literally. Yeah, they're saying bring the, bring the sticks down. Bravo! <laughs> now they are going to walk it off. The ball's at the 20, and now they're going to bring it back. Well, here's the problem. The PA guy here said that the foul is against the Hearts, but then the official pointed at Highland, so somebody didn't get it right. So it is a personal foul against uh, a personal foul against uh, Highland, apparently. So that works out much better for the Hearts. So the line of scrimmage is going to be the 10 to start. That's where they set it up here with 5:28 to go in the first quarter. So the penalty is against Highland. And it's first and 10 for them at their own 10-yard line. 
7-0 Highland. 5.28 to go opening quarter at Highland. In the shotgun, there's the snap. Quarterback's going to keep, runs it up the middle, and the ball's loose. And did the Hearts come away with it? Or they're also some of the crowd calling for cries of face mask. Yeah, and the flag. No flag, though, right? Don't. There it is, uh, right yeah, in the middle did, of the field. One did come in. All right, so they'll sort this out. And this will go against the Hearts. Flag was thrown at about the 18. Let's see where they set it down. We can get you the exact spot. It's a 15-yarder. So they'll set it down at the 33. So from the 18 to the 33, a 15-yard walk-off. So the game was to the 18. And then a 15-yard walk-off on the penalty. So first and 10 at their 33, and they're going to throw. Going deep. Got a man. Oh, he shoved off. And he caught it, and he's going to score a touchdown, and he shoved off big as life, but Highland scores regardless. I don't see a flag, so it's a touchdown for Highland. 67 yards in the third catch of the game for Brody Lewis, and uh, Highland is in control. Wow, that was obvious to me, but... Maybe it was my Effingham eyes that was causing me to see it that way. Brody Lewis scores. It's 13-0 Highland. Score comes with 5-12 to go in the opening quarter, and they'll kick for one here. Taking their time. Waiting on the snap. There it is. High snap. He got the ball down. He missed it. So they throw for two instead, and down he goes, and they're unsuccessful. So the two-point conversion after they whiffed on the extra point kick is unsuccessful. So it's 13 to nothing, and the Hearts will get the ball. 5-12 to go, opening quarterback in a minute on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at EffinghamComputer.com. All right, back at Highland, it's 13-0 Bulldogs. They try a low kick, and it's fielded on the hop. Nice job by Walls. He's loose, and he gets it out across the 30 before they take him down. So a nice return by Caden Walls. Brody Lewis. Brody Lewis on the tackle of Caden Walls. That drive was two plays, 90 yards, took 16 seconds. Highlighted by a big touchdown pass from Wubbles to Lewis. Extra point try was not successful. Highland in front. 13 to nothing, 5.07 to go in the first quarter. Highland 7 and 1, Hearts 5 and 3 coming into this game. Boy, you'd love to see the Hearts get a nice sustained drive here or throw 70 yards for a touchdown. That'd be that'd work. Pontius up under center on first and 10, looking to pass, and he throws it out in the flats, and it's caught by Wolf. And Garrett gets to about the 34 before they take him down. So a gain of three, and it's second and seven. Yeah, try and screen to Wolf. Just a quick pass on the right side. See if he could find any room to run. And Wolf did not uh, have a lot of space. Able to pick up maybe three yards there. Next week, there's football. We're pretty sure. Who, where, when? We'll let you know more tomorrow night. Up under center, Pontius checks off, looking to throw. There's the pass. It is caught. Oh, and it is dropped. And they call it incomplete. I was worried about a fumble because I thought he had it long enough for it to be a completed catch. Yeah, Connor Thompson was the man who caught that ball, and I think that he did. They're, they're moving the chains. Yeah, he that was a catch, and then he lost the handle on it for a second but was able to, able to corral it and get it out to the Highland 48. So a 14-yard pickup for Thompson on the first down. So all's well that ends well there. New set of downs for the Hearts. 4-10 to go, opening quarter. Island already in front, 13 to nothing. But the Hart's able to pick up the first down. Pontius up under center, handoff, Dunstan, and he is hit at about the line of scrimmage. 
no gain. It looks like it'll be second and ten. Yeah, that's one of those games for a running back where you have to understand, like, it's going to be tough running, you know. There's not going to be a lot of big gainers. You just have to do the work to try and keep everybody honest and keep things open for the passing game. Football just shy of the 49-yard line of Effingham. Fadius up under, nope, he's in the shotgun. There's the handoff to oh, Dustin. Boy. boy, he got leveled. Goodness gracious. Oh, my. Boy, and that young man has a right to be pumped up. Cameron Willis, number six, just speared him in the backfield and drove him backwards. That's the kind of hit you dream about as a defensive back, and Willis was able to do it. Balls at the 49, no gain. So it's third and ten. This island team's pretty good, Dustin. We're, that's what we expected, and that's what we have seen so far. Hart's in the shotgun, third and ten, looking to throw, got him, Ooh. and caught! Run all day, touchdown Effingham! Got Andrew Lutz over the middle, fake handoff, the play action works, the Lutz gets behind the defense, and a 51-yard touchdown gets Effingham back in the game. Just like that, it's 13-6, to six. so the Hart's right back in it, as Dustin said. Score comes with 2.53 to go on the pass play. And the Hearts will go for one in the foot of Armando Estrada. He's ready. There's the snap, the placement, the kicks up, and he hits it out to the road. <laughs> and it's 13-7. to seven. Boy, he didn't miss that one. 2.53 to go in the first quarter. Back with a kickoff in a minute on 97.9 XFM. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at GecknerBros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Here's the kickoff, and Estrada smokes it into the end zone for a touchback. It'll be first and ten for Highland at their 20. He was on that one. Yeah, he left uh, the first kickoff just shy of the goal line that time. He kicked it deep into the end zone, as Armando has done a few times this year. <laughs> more often than not, quite honestly. And uh, yeah, so Highland will have 80 yards to go. But uh, important, most importantly for Effingham, they get a score on the board. Now their defense needs to get a little something done. 51-yard pass play, two lots. Kicks good by Estrada. Five plays, 69 yards, 249 on the drive. And the Hearts are back within 13-7 to seven with 2.53 to go in the first quarter here at Highland. Three touchdowns and nine minutes of high school football <laughs> so far. Scoring in a hurry. Let's see if the Hearts can get a stop. Trying to get set. There's the snap. There's the handoff, and he gets loose, and down he goes at about the 35. So pretty good gain on first down. Really close to a first down. Got one man moving the sticks. The officials aren't sure. No, they're setting it at the 29, so a little more, not as generous a spot as I thought, maybe for Dylan Beadle who got nine yards on his first carry of the game. Chain gang started to move the sticks, and the officials had said, no, I don't think so. Not quite. So the send man in motion. There's a flag procedure penalty on Highland. So that'll move it back five yards. Well, after giving up nine yards on the first down play, you'll certainly take the help there, get it in a bit more manageable situation for the Effingham defense. Once again, we will know tomorrow night about who and where the Hearts will play first round of the playoffs. There's a snap in the shotgun. They get it away, and it's complete, and a nice game. Out to the 40, still on his feet, and finally he gets tackled about midfield. I'm telling you, that was some run, and nice job by Charlie Ring. He ran a mile to make that tackle. He's on the line, and he came downfield to make the stop, but the game's to midfield. And a first down for Highland. Just a quick little dump off uh, whenever he was about ready to get hit in the backfield and uh, play set up nicely. So first and 10, minute 57 to go opening quarter. Been a busy one. And there is a gain 
but then there is a tackle. Nice tackle by Michael Love as he got a stop on the Bulldogs number three, and he got a gain to the 47 of Effingham. So the gain of three, and it's second and seven. That was number three running the ball that time, uh, and the, his name is Hunter Fry. From the shotgun, there's the handoff. They come to the near side. They seem to like the near side, and they've had some success, but the Hearts do a good job of slowing it down at least there. And I want to mention one guy that's out there for the Hearts because I haven't had a chance to mention him all season, and that is Eli Middendorf. Eli is eligible as of tonight, and he made the tackle there. So congratulations to Eli in the game. There's a fake. They throw to the far sidelines. It's caught and dropped. Woo, that was a big play, and that would have gone for big yardage. As it is, it's fourth down. Yeah, Cameron Willis was the intended receiver. The throw was there. He just couldn't quite squeeze it. Otherwise, that's a, another first down and then some. Instead, Highland facing a uh, fourth and a couple here. They've only punted seven times all year long, so I'm going to guess that they're not going to here. <laughs> And there's the handoff to the deep back. He gains and decent yardage, and he has the first down. He got it inside the 40, and that's enough for a Highland first down. Yep, that's Travis Porter, his fourth carry of the game, enough for the first down. So uh, Highland keeping the drive going here. Game to the 37, Dustin. So a new set of downs for Highland. 34 seconds left, first quarter's about to come to an end. From the shotgun, now there's a whistle. I wonder if it was timeout. Timeout, yeah, Highland. Highland got one because they weren't going to get the playoff or something like that. So with 30 seconds, they call time. Gail, let's take a 30-second break. It's Highland 13 Effingham 7 on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham, will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. All time, they didn't want a delay of game call. 30 seconds left first quarter. It's 13-7 Highland. Hearts the last team to score though, so you're feeling a little better about things. A little better by Highland on the march again. They are running the football extremely well, but uh, they've had some space in the passing game and <laughs> a couple of drops, honestly, from being even more effective throwing the ball. So Effingham's defense has a lot to think about and a lot to deal with here. So a new set of downs for Highland. Inside the Hearts 40. Man in motion, there's the snap, there's the handoff. They come to the left side, and they got loose. Boy, there was a seam, and the Hearts finally stop him at the five-yard line. Heck of an effort by Walls to get down there. I think it's Walls. Nah, maybe it's not. Maybe it's... But bottom line is the Bulldogs have a first and goal at the five-yard line. And that was Dylan Beadle with his second carry, a uh, 32-yarder to go with a nine-yarder he had before. Connor Simmons made the touchdown-saving tackle, but it's first and goal at the five for uh, at the six for Highland. They run it up the gut. He's still on his feet, and there's flags galore. Looks like a parade, so there won't be a touchdown on this play. Well, then something came in late. So it was a touchdown, but we'll see whether it stands or whether the penalty was on Highland. I didn't see who ran the ball. I saw all the hankies. Still waiting for them to sort it out. Again, there were a couple of flags that came in. There's a face mask against Effingham. That's one of the signals. And then another one came in late. So. Face mask, it's declined, so there's the touchdown signal. So Highland does score. From the six, and was it six that scored? I'm waiting to hear it. I was writing. Sorry, the touchdown makes it 19 to seven. 
comes with 5.6 seconds left in the first quarter. They're still deciding what they're going to do here. I think they're going to go for two. Yeah, they're going to go for two. Wubbles lines up. There's the snap. He's looking to pass. He goes to the end zone, and it's caught for the two-point conversion. So they get that point back that they weren't able to cash in on on their previous touchdown. Now there's another flag out on the field. And it's on Effingham. So that'll be enforced on the kickoff. 21 to 7 Highland, 5.6 seconds left. Gail, we'll just keep it here since I've yacked so long. We'll just keep it here. 21 to 7, Highland has extended their lead. And I apologize. Was it Cameron Willis that scored? I honestly don't know. And I apologize that I don't. But it makes 21-7 Highland. We'll find out a little later who scored that touchdown. But a six-yard run. And then the two-point conversion was successful. So it's 21-7. to seven. The score comes in a busy first quarter. That's the fourth touchdown of the quarter. Webbles kept it. Six-yard run for Brent Webbles, the quarterback. So his second touchdown of the game. Thank you. Let's uh, give Caleb the assist on that one. He's working the crowd back there. Thank you, Caleb. Eight-play, 80-yard drive, by the way, Greg. Thank you, Dustin. Two minutes and 47 seconds. So the heart's down 21 to seven, and we're still in the first quarter. And the penalty against Effingham means that uh, they're gonna be kicking off from the, from the, they're setting it down at the Effingham 40 for the kickoff. <laughs> so it was a, I'm, I'm waiting to see here. But that seems to be where they're at. So see. that's where they'll kick off. So it was a 20 yard penalty? Come on now. Maybe there were two? I don't know. We're, we're you know, we're, we're um, had a little confusion there. So we're still getting it sorted out. But yeah, this ball set at the 40 yard line. So that's where they're going to be kicking it from. So you would presume, unless he tries a squib kick, but this one's going into the end zone. Still 5.6 seconds left in the first quarter. It's 21 to seven Highland. He approaches the football. There's the kick and he does kick it into the end zone. So it is a touchback. So it'll be first and 10 for the hearts at the 20. So Dustin, good job of sorting out that drive. Eight plays, 80 yards, 247 and a six yard run for Wubbles. And then the two-point conversion on the pass completion. And they're up 21 to seven. Still 5.6 seconds left. Yeah, Hart's able to run one play here. But uh, boy, it's been a tough first quarter. You knew it was going to be. You just got to come up with an answer. Yeah, they're seven and one. We're at their place. They're really good. They're number five in the state in 5A. Let's see what happens with the Hearts here on first down. They do run the football. Dunstan and he gets driven back. The whistle blown, the ball came loose, but the whistle had blown. That's the end of the first quarter. And they give him a yard. So one yard gain for Dunstan. We've played the first quarter here at Highland. It's Highland 21, Effingham 7, back in 30, Gale on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at EffinghamComputer.com. Final game of the regular season here at Island. It's Island 21, Effingham 7, and Dustin, it's going to be interesting to see how the Hearts can hitch up their proverbial belts here. Well, I mean, nothing surprising here. Highland has been uh, potent offensively and for the most part tough defensively. Uh, Effingham got behind them once though, you know, got a good pass play to go. 
that's what you're gonna have to do. You're down two scores already. You're gonna have to be able to throw the ball. So Weldon Dunstan, you know, eight yards on six carries, there's not a lot of room for him. So they will have to, at some point, have some success in the pass game. It is second and nine from the Effingham 21 as we get the second quarter underway. Pontius looking to throw, rolling to his left, and just has to get rid of the football before he takes a sack. He was being chased in the backfield by Travis Porter, who's a pretty good linebacker in addition to being a solid running back, and Pontius did very well just to get rid of the football before he took the sack. Yeah, he was coming to the near side of the field and was much more measured in delivering the ball out of play. But it is going to be a third and nine, Effingham deep in its own territory. So it's going to take a big play here to keep the drive going. A couple of early scores. Triad leading Lincoln 6-0 into the first. End of the first, Taylorville leading Civic Memorial 6-0. Somebody's going to get a much needed win out of those two. Pontius out of the shotgun looking for a pass over the middle. And Lutz has found an opening again out across the 40-yard line. And Effingham first down. They convert that third and nine and then some out to the 42-yard line. That is a 21-yard pickup for Lutz, his second catch of the game. He's at 72 yards already, and Pontius is 5 of 6 throwing it. Well, the Hearts have been able to exploit that across the middle, and nothing fancy. Both of these teams are going to need to uh, address their pass defense. Three wide receivers in the game, two to the right, one to the left for Pontius. He's in the shotgun with a man lined up to his right, and it's walls in motion from the left, handed off to him. Effingham likes to run that play that time, though. Not much room for Caden to turn the ball upfield. I don't know if he even got past the line of scrimmage. Gain of one. Gain of one to the 43, so it's second and nine. They've seen that play work for Effingham. They'll run it once or twice a game, but that time Walls just was not able to get turned upfield. Again, he was lined up left and was coming in motion left to right, just didn't uh, have any space. Same formation here on second down, second and nine at the Highland 43. This time it's Wolf in motion. They fake the handoff to him. Now Pontius looking for a throw over the over to the right sideline, and he got Caden Walls, I think, on the far sideline. That's that's Dunstan, number seven, not nine. So Dunstan out of the backfield with the catch. Not often that we see Weldon catching passes, but it's another Effingham first down into uh, into Highland territory. From the 43 of Effingham to the night to the uh, 29 of Highland. So a 28-yard pickup for Dunstan. And out of the shotgun again, the handoff this time to Dunstan, going to his left, trying to pick his way through. Not a lot of space there, but he is able to get a bit of a gain on first down. Inside the 25, let's see exactly where they sit it down. And they're going to call it the 25, but that's a gain of four, so second and six. Honestly, for Dunstan, that's the biggest run that he's had in this game, and that's nothing against Weldon. It's just been tough running for uh, the Effingham feature back. So they get it to second and six, again at the Highland 25-yard line. Pontius out of the shotgun with Dunstan lined up to his right, and uh, Tanner's going to run it himself. He was going right and then cuts back to the left up the middle, trying to dive across the 20. That's where he's brought down, 20 or 19. I think the 19 is where they're going to put it. And it's very close to a first down, Dustin. That's why I was going to see it has the 19, and they do move the sticks. So it starts with a first down from the 25 to the 19. Six-yard pickup for Tanner. He's got 12 yards on three carries. And the Hart's moving the ball again into the red zone at the Highland 19-yard line. Effingham trails 21-7 here in the second quarter. Clock running at 9.38 currently. you just like to watch the Hearts mature over the course of a game and what they can do. Lutz lined up to the left, but they're going to hand off to Dunstan up the middle, and boy, did he get blown up. We said when Highland came out, Guy Stacher has some big kids, and I think Weldon just met one of them there. No gain, still at the 19. They might have given him, they, might, they gave him a yard. We'll, we'll give him a yard. It, what did, the spot did look like maybe they were going to put it at the line of scrimmage, but uh, I think they have put it up at the 18-yard line. And, uh, you know, Weldon took a hit there. Well, I want to give him a yard on that. <laughs> Fair enough. Don't want, to, don't want that to be all for nothing because he, uh, he took a shot there. <laughs> he so, worked hard for that yard. But it's second and nine now at the Highland 18. Effingham with the football. Pontius out of the shotgun again. Pretty much has been this entire trip. Rolling to his right, going for the end zone, and off the hands of a receiver. I don't know if he was in the end zone or right at knocking at the door of it, but that was uh, that was almost caught. He might have been trying to stay in bounds too. 
Lutz was the intended receiver. And that would have been a tough catch for sure, but uh, boy, it was a, not a bad throw at all for Pontius, who was six of eight throwing the ball in this game for 120 yards, but now a big third down play coming up. Third and nine, 8.44 to go in the second quarter, but Effingham with a with a chance to get some more points on the board, trailing by 14 here. Yep, two more plays in a situation like this, and now what, we've got to walk off on the hearts? Here's the Deppingham was whistled for a five-yard penalty while I was talking. I did not see a signal, so I can't tell you what it was, but I can not tell you that it was Effingham's third penalty uh, of the game for 35 yards. So they've sure. had some come at a tough time. From the 18 back to the 23. So now second and 14 for Effingham. A little bit further away, Pontius in the shotgun. Back lined up to his left. Looks to his right, then passes over to Caden Walls on the right. And boy, that pass is a little tall, but Walls had his hands on it, couldn't corral it. It's just a short little dump off, but Caden couldn't catch it, and it's going to be third and 14 now. Well, speaking of blown up, that was what was going to happen to Pontius. He really needed to get rid of it and couldn't make it quite as sharp as he would have liked to made it to Walls. So incomplete. It's third down and 14. That was the 10th play of the drive for Effingham, so they have sustained this. They, again, took the ball at the 20 after a touchback and have moved it all the way to the Highland 23, but we're sort of stalling out here, third and 14. 8.41 to go before halftime. Hearts need something here. Out of the shotgun, two receivers to the right, one to the left. Pontius takes the snap. He's in trouble. Gets away from some defense, from defenders in the backfield. Now he's just going to scramble, go for it himself, up the middle, dive it toward the 10. Of course, he, he needed the, maybe the nine, something like that, and he was close, but not quite there, I don't think. But now he's got the hearts in field goal range. In field goal range, yes. They might have been in field goal range at the 20th, to be perfectly honest with you, with, with uh, Armando Estrada on the team, but yeah, you'd feel a lot better about one here. That seems to be. That was fourth down. That was fourth down. Okay, the scoreboard was, I apologize, the scoreboard was showing third down. I'll watch the sticks. So he got to the, he got to the 10. So a gain of 13. I apologize, well, folks. Well, sorry, I didn't help. Spawning is 13 yards, but now, now it is Highland with the football at the 10 yard line. Now some more discussion. Now they're talking it over. Yeah, now they're calling the whole crew in. Maybe the scoreboard had it right. Or yeah, maybe it could be, it could be it was close to the first down. It could be that they want to take a closer look before before they give Highland the football. So we're in a holding pattern here. Effingham got the ball to the 10 yard line, came up just short of a first down. Now Highland is going to take the ball. They've decided they got it right. So 8.31 in the second quarter and it is Highland football at the 10 yard line, at its own 10. Brett Hefner, the Effingham coach, not quite satisfied yet with, uh, with uh, the, the conclusion here, but I think that uh, he's, gonna have to, he's gonna have to move on. Get your point made now, and maybe that'll help out later. So turnover on downs for Effingham, and I apologize. We had, uh, we had thought it was third down, but it was fourth down on that Tanner Pontius run. Out of the shotgun now, it's going to be Highland running the football up the middle. And there is a pile up just shy of the 20-yard line. We'll have to wait and see who comes out of it as far as who was running the ball. Webbles, the uh, Highland quarterback, keeps it that time. He's already scored two touchdowns tonight. He's running the ball well. Gets it out to the 17-yard line, a gain of seven. Spencer Fox put a dent in this artificial turf. Now he's up. He was in on the stop for the Hearts. So Highland is up 21-7. They have uh, they have scored on all of their possessions in this game. Second and three. Eppingham trying to do something about it. Shotgun snap now pass to the right. Juggled briefly and caught by number one Brody Lewis. And then he comes up the sideline. So after a, a brief juggle on the screen pass, Lewis was able Lewis was able to corral it, get it up the sideline. His fourth catch of the game is a Highland first down. Armando Estrada ran him out of bounds, playing over at the corner. At the 30-yard line, so a 13-yard pickup for Lewis. His fourth catch for 98 yards now. It's first and 10 Highland. They're going to throw again. This time, 
left a little behind the intended receiver. That was number 11, Cade Altadonna, who was supposed to catch that one, but the throw was probably a little bit behind him. He was lined up on the left, and he wasn't able to pull it in. So that is just the second incompletion for the Highland quarterback, Brent Webbles. London Wrinkle was there keeping an eye on things just in case the catch had been made. So second and 10 for Highland now. They're at their own 30-yard line. 7.41 to go in the second quarter, and Highland leading Effingham 21-7. Levels in the shotgun. He hands off, and then the Vanny handed off to tries to throw a pass to Webbles. They're trying to do a little trickery there, and the pass was too short. So it was Alta, or, uh, yeah, Kate Altadonna, number 11, that took that handoff, then tried to throw a pass to Webbles rolling to his left. He left it short, and that's going to be third and 10 for the Bulldogs. It was close, but he would have had to come back and tried to dive toward the ball to make the grab, but came up empty. Highland trying to do a little something there. They had the opening, the throw just wasn't quite there. So third and 10 now, Webbles out of the shotgun, and he uh, had Michael Love sneaking up on his backside, but before before Love could get to him, Altadonna made the catch on the uh, Highland sideline, the right sideline. That's gonna be, that's gonna be close to another first down. It is a first down, so Highland another chain moving play. Estrada and Wrinkle were over there, but neither could make the stop in time. The game's to the 40, a gain of 10. So Altadonna's first catch of the game is a 10-yarder, and that is just enough for a first down. And Webbles is now 7 out of 9. He's under center this time, and he's going to hand off and lots of space going to the left. And boy, now out in, open, out in the open is Travis Porter. He gets well into Effingham territory before he is wrestled down. Gets on the other side of the Effingham 40-yard line. Travis Porter with a big gain and another Highland first down. To the 38 of Effingham. Heck of a stop by Spencer Fox. He might have saved a touchdown. He bulldogged him down. 22-yard pickup, though, for Travis Porter. He's got 38 yards on five carries. This time Webbles out of the shotgun. He's looking to throw, and he throws a little jump pass. That is caught, and now turn it upfield. That is Porter out of the backfield with the catch. He gets out across the Effingham 30, and it's going to be close to another first down for the Bulldogs, who are just rolling right now. London Wrinkle on the stop. They've been going to the side of the field, not running it up the gut. They are going to call it another first down. Ten-yard pickup to the 28. Porter with another with another catch. They have this field well measured. They're getting exactly 10 yards. Yeah, so 150 yards for Webbles now on eight of 10 passing. And Highland is all, all the way to the Effingham 28 yard line. Again, they started at the 10, at their own 10, on a turnover on downs, and they have moved the ball deep into the Hearts territory. 7:02 to go before halftime. A little bit of a little bit of a delay here before they let Highland uh, snap the football. And they're going to say second down. So, so they didn't get a first down. Didn't quite get it. Second and inches coming up. They announced a first down, so they're just going to hand it off and get the first down on the ground instead, handing it off to number three. That is Hunter Fry, and so he will get the first down. So it was a rushing first down instead of a passing first down for the Bulldogs, but, but they did get it, and they continue to march. 28, the gain is to the 23, a gain of five. Michael Love on the stop. So first and 10, Highland. Out of the shotgun, Webbles with a running back on either side of him. He hands off to, no, he, he faked the handoff to Porter, and then they gave it to somebody going up on the left. Instead, there's a flag on the play. So this one's finally whistled dead out on the left edge. Beetle. It was Beetle, number nine, who took the handoff. We'll have to wait and see. He got all the way out to the Effingham 15 or so, but again, there is a flag on the play that came came uh, well before it was whistled dead. The flag, for what it's worth, is at the 14. Play started at the 23. It's going to be against. It's going to be against Effingham. Terrible time with Highland this close to the Hearts end zone. Holding. Hold, defensive holding against Effingham. So a five yard, five yard penalty. That's good for another. And they will set it down at yeah. the Effingham eight yard line. Yeah, half the distance this close to the goal line. So it's first and goal at the eight. So it was a six yard pickup 
And now they're going to throw it into the end zone, and all alone is Brendan Jelly, number 43, eight yard touchdown pass. And Highlands' lead extends to 27 7. 6.25 to go in the second quarter, and Highland has its fourth touchdown of the game. I'm not sure who was supposed to be with Jelly, but he was wide open. Yeah, right in the middle of the end zone. So an eight-yard touchdown pass to Jelly. His first catch of the game. And uh, the ninth completion in 11 tries for Webbles. His second touchdown pass. They're going to kick the extra point. It's not the best kick, but it's good enough. Sneaks over the upright, and that makes it 28-7. to So 6.25 to go before halftime, and Highland has scored again. Bulldogs lead Effingham. It's 28-7 Highland. You're listening to High School Football on 97.9 XFM. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at GecknerBros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Back at Highland, 28-7 Bulldogs. They've scored their fourth touchdown of the game. Now kicking off to Effingham, taking it about the nine-yard line. Caden Walls is going to have a return going to his right. Now he's got a little bit of room, gets out across the 30, and a pretty good return for Caden to see about uh, Effingham trying to come up with an answer after Highland scored its fourth touchdown of the game. A 10-play, 90-yard drive for the Bulldogs. Two minutes and six seconds to complete, and it was uh, finished off on an eight-yard pass play from from Levels to Jelly, an eight-yard pass. The kick was good. It's 28-7 Highland with 6.19 to go before halftime. Awful lot of time left in this second quarter, as you said. Walls took that kick off uh, from the 9 to the 31, a 22-yard return for Caden. That's where Effingham will set up shop. First play is a handoff to Dunstan, and he just got nowhere to go. In fact, might have run into his own guy there. Very little running room for the Effingham back. Checking to see whether he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. I'm afraid not. Yeah, the football's just, those of the football just across the 30. So actually they lost about a half a yard, so it's second and 11. Just has been a tough game for Weldon Dunson so far. Not a lot of room for him to run. 12 yards on nine carries. Effingham with a second and 10 and a half or so. Potting us out of the shotgun, two receivers to his right, one to his left. A back standing at his left. Tanner's going to run it himself this time, going to the left and then back up the middle. Dives toward the 35-yard line, but probably brought down more like the 34, so just a four-yard pickup. and Two plays, and Effingham's got a third and a long six coming up. Gain to the 34, gain of four. Effingham trailing 28-7. to It's a very good Highland club. So third and six. And they've got a third and six, 5.08 to go before halftime. Effingham has come up with some pretty good third down plays in this game to keep drives going. They're going to need another one here. Pontius out of the shotgun, pretty much the same formation as last time. Looks to his left and now looks to his right. Now he's going to scramble. He puts a move on one linebacker and no, oh, got brought down just shy of the 40 yard line. He was about a yard shy of scrambling for a first down. And could not quite get there. So Tanner trying to make something out of nothing there, but came up a couple of yards shy of the first down. Needed to get to the 41. They mark it at the 39. Tanner's got 34 yards on six carries. Effingham so far seems to have its offensive personnel still on the field. And now they're going to call the timeout. So Effingham will get a timeout. Why don't we take a 30-second break? When we come back, it's at Highland 28, Effingham 7. 426 to go before halftime. High school football on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Keller Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. 
check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. 26 to go before halftime. Hearts trail Highland 28 to 7. And Effingham facing a fourth down and two. They're at their own 39, so in some games, you would just punt this away. But uh, you're already trailing by 21 points. They want to at least talk about what they need to do because at this point, Highland hasn't, uh, you haven't kept them out of the end zone yet, and you really need to keep pace somehow. And uh, so Brett Hefner talking it over during this, uh, during this break. I am right. They've had it four times and they've scored four times, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. I mean, Highland has punted the ball seven times all season long, okay? They are a potent offense. They've scored more than 400 points this year, or even before tonight. Effingham is indeed going to go for it on fourth and two. Pontius in the shotgun. Three wide receivers, and Tanner's going to keep it himself. Trying to follow his blocking, now goes back to his left. This is going to be tough, and I think he just did get it. Tanner paid the price at the end of that play, but I think he got three yards when he needed two, and Effingham's possession will stay alive. Really close to helmet to helmet there. Gain to the 42, so a gain of three. They needed two. Take whatever you can get here. Man, oh, man. So the 42-yard line, yes, the 42. Three-yard pickup for Pontius. He's got 37 yards on seven carries, and most importantly for Effingham, it's first and 10. At their own 42-yard line. Again, Pontius looking to pass, got a lot of time. He's trying to get Dunstan, and he, oh, Dunstan trying to make the over-the-shoulder catch. He was behind the defense. He could not... Haul it in, a pretty good throw, pretty good throw from Tanner Pontius, throwing it deep along the near sideline, and Dunstan just could not quite haul it in. That was a beautiful throw by Pontius. Well, and Tanner had a lot of time to make the throw, you know. Uh, he has been kind of forced to scramble in the pocket a little bit here in the second quarter, but that time he had time to size things up, make a really nice deep throw, and they just could not connect. Boy, that would have been nice. Instead of moving side to side, he was going up toward the line and back, Dunstan already had one catch in this game, and now he's going to run the football. He finds some room along the right side. That is Weldon's biggest biggest carry of the game, approaching midfield, maybe a yard short of the 50-yard line, but again, Weldon's uh, best carry of the night. Gain of seven from the 42 to the 49, so it's third and three. That's his 10th carry, and he went from 12 to 19 yards. Again, it's just been tough running for Dunstan. Third and three for the Hearts, 323 to go before halftime. So now the clock becomes a factor here as you're still 51 yards away from the end zone, but you do need to convert this third down. Pontius looking to throw. He is flushed out of the pocket, running for his life, and he's sacked back at the Effingham 45-yard line. Yeah, a loss of four from the 49 back to the 45. So as much time as Tanner had to throw on that uh, last play, he didn't have any time there. And now on a fourth and seven, We'll see what Effingham's going to do here, but uh, this is a little, little tougher decision, and now the Hearts are going to get a timeout. So the Hearts take a break. 2.50 to go before halftime. It's an Effingham timeout. The Hearts trail Highland 28-7, and you are listening to it here on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at effinghamcomputer.com. Fourth and seven, Effingham out of that Hearts timeout. They're going to go for it from their own 45. Pontius rolling to his right, and he connects with a receiver on the far sideline, and they're going to call that a catch, looking to see who holds it in. Caden Walls, I think, made a very tough catch on the right sideline, and Effingham on fourth and seven manages to keep this drive alive. Gain of 10 from the 45 to the 45. Boy, oh boy. Effingham, if nothing else, I mean, listen, the scoreboard is tilted heavily in Highland's favor, but the Hearts have come up with some big plays when they have needed them, kept themselves, kept themselves alive. Push you out here to the near side. Let's see what happens. 
So at the Highland 45, 245 to go before halftime. Shotgun snap, they're going to hand it to Dunstan, and he's able to find some room around the right edge. So uh, second straight productive carry for Weldon after some really uh, tough running for him early in the game, and that's going to be a nice first down gain for the Hearts. Little by little, that O-line starting to make a difference. And gain to the 42, a gain of three. Not as much as I thought, honestly. I thought he was going to get, uh, I thought that was more like a four or five yard run. But it is second and seven, Effingham. Shotgun snap to Pontius. He wants to throw this time, and he's got Lutz over the middle. He was lost by somebody, and he is going to walk into the end zone. 42-yard touchdown catch for Andrew Lutz, and Effingham is back within 28-13. to 13. What a pretty pass play right in his lap, right between the one and the one. I'll tell you what, there, Andrew Lutz has found his way behind the defense a few times here, and somebody... Somebody's lost him a couple of times, and that's the second score for Andrew. His uh, third catch of the game, 114 yards for him. And Effingham, most importantly, back within 28-13. Armando Estrada going to try to kick the extra point. Plenty of leg. And that one is good. And the Hearts are back within two scores. So with 2.10 to go before halftime, the Hearts get the score. Effingham still trails, though. It's Highland 28, Effingham 14. Back in a minute, high school football on 97.9 XFM. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at GecknerBros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Short kickoff for Effingham out of that score. The Hearts get back on the board. They trailed Highland 28 to 14. Orlando Estrada's kickoff to Beadle was taken at about the 16 yard line, so he kind of punched one up there. And then Highland penalized during the return, so they're going to have this one walk back a little bit. Beadle returned it out to. I think the 32-yard line, and now they're going to bring it back to the uh, 27. So a five or must have been a hold. It's 10 yards back to the 22. Oh, 22-yard line. So let me tell you about the scoring drive for yeah. Effingham. A 10-play, 69-yard drive. Took four minutes and 15 seconds to complete. Capped off by a 42-yard touchdown pass from Tanner Pontius to Andrew Lutz. Now Highland with the football at its own 22-yard line. They're going to throw on first down. And Altadonna was the intended receiver, Estrada in coverage, and the throw was a little bit behind Altadonna here on the right sideline. It has really been fun to watch Altadonna and, and Estrada go at it along the sideline. Yeah, they've had some battles, and uh, there's, you know, some some definite uh, definite frustration between the two at times, but it's just a good hard-fought good hard fought battle between the two, but it is an incomplete pass for Highland, so it'll be second and ten Bulldogs from their own 22-yard line. Hearts have not gotten a stop tonight. That would be huge coming off a score. Yep, Highland has scored on every possession in this game. They've got two minutes before halftime and they lead Effingham 28-14. to 14. Back to passes, Wobbles again, throws into double coverage and it is picked off! Picked off at the 44-yard line. That's Jack Harper with the interception and he's going to return it from the 44 to about the 31-yard line. So an interception for Effingham and with 150 to go before halftime, the Hearts could pull a little bit closer. They're going to take it over at Highland's 32-yard line. This is a real opening. Wow. The ball was up for grabs, and nice job by Harper. He'd been playing his receiver, but then played off him and was there for the interception. So 12-yard interception return for Harper, and most importantly, Effingham gets the ball. The Hearts have the ball at the Highland 32-yard line. Minute 50 before halftime. First play is a handoff to Dunstan trying to go to his left, and he's got nothing. No space at all. He'd be very lucky if he got back to the line of scrimmage. Eppingham still has a couple of timeouts, so something to keep in mind here. Again, they have turned, taken the ball away. That's the first turnover for either team. A loss of a yard for Dunstan on that first down carry. So, second and 11 from the Highland 33. 
Going to throw this time. Pontius rolling to his left, trying to throw to the, the sideline to Garrett Wolf. And I don't know even if Garrett catches that ball, which he doesn't. I don't know if he could have stayed in bounds. That's an incomplete pass. And it's third and 11 very quickly. Carter Bushy was... I uh, take that back. That's not Carter Bush. They had somebody else that was in the middle of the field and might have been a better target, but I think Pontius had picked these receiver by then. Well, and he was rolling. At that point, he's on the run, so yep. his ability to scan the field yep. probably limited a little bit. Uh, Highland, for the most part, has made life difficult for Tanner in the backfield, but the times he's been able to survey the field and make a throw, he's made some pretty good ones. He's going to need one here, third and 11 at the Highland 33. 118 to go before halftime. Pontius in the shotgun, two receivers to his left, one to his right. Dunstan lined up to his left. He's going to go downfield. Pontius running for his life, and he gets rid of the ball just before he gets sacked. The Highland sideline wants to know if it's grounding. Well, there's a receiver right there. There was a receiver right there, so there's no worry. They're going to throw the flag. Uh, let's see, though. Let's see if that's what it is. It's now grounding. Now grounding. It is grounding. They wouldn't. Yep. Why do you wait till? Well, you. That's that's pretty normal. That's pretty normal. They can talk about it a little bit before they make the call. So it's the fourth penalty against Effingham, and on third and eleven. Yeah, Brett Hefner is. <laughs> he is about as fired up as you're going to see him on the Effingham sideline. So again, Pontius was rolling to his left, trying to throw before he got sacked. And so he had uh, he had somebody to picked out to throw to. Not sure if that person was even somebody he could throw to, to be perfectly honest with you. Loss is back to into Effingham territory to the 47 plus. That's loss of down, remember? Yep. So 15 yards and a loss of down. Now they're going to move it <laughs> to a different location. Uh, it, it's the to, to the 48. So. They say back about five, but that's 15 yards. The line of scrimmage was a 33 on that play. Oh, so it's because that's where he, to the 48. That's where he was, but that's where he was at when he was thrown. I think that's the point. So, so he loses. It's 50. He loses 10 yards on the play, plus the five-yard penalty. So Pontius is going to punt. That's the that's the that's the, what's going on here. Effingham at uh, the, the Highland 48, and Tanner Pontius is going to punt. In fourth and 26, snap is high. Pontius able to come up with it and get a pretty good high kick downfield. And they're going to let that one roll to a stop at the 22. So a pretty good punt for Tanner Pontius. And with 104 to go, Highland will take over possession again at its own 22-yard line, I believe. That was the highest punt I've seen this season. And it hit, and it moved about three more yards. They're going to call it the 22. Hold on. The 22. Yep, a 26-yard punt for Pontius. Uh, yeah. Not done yet, Justin. Now it's a 23. <laughs> oh, no. Looking at the scoreboard. So I don't have a great angle on it. At any rate, it's Highland football. 104 to go before halftime. Bulldogs have 64 seconds to try and put a score on the board. And they hand it off in a big game. That's Porter, their stud running back. And Travis Porter has got a first down. So Effingham, after getting the takeaway, wasn't able to get anything done. I think some large part to an intentional grounding penalty. And then Porter gets a big gain out to the 40-yard line. So an 18-yard pickup for the Highland running back. And the Bulldogs move the chains. Estrada ran him out of bounds. So 60 yards for Highland to go. They've got 58 seconds before halftime. Effingham will get the ball first in the second half, so you really <laughs> do anything you can to keep Highland off the scoreboard. They did last time getting the interception, interception from Jack Harper, but they're, they're going to hand off again up the middle. That's Porter again. Not quite as much room for Travis Porter, but still a pretty solid gain on first down. Fox on the stop, gain to the 45. Five-yard pickup for Porter. He's got 61 yards on seven carries, and Highland is going to get this, its second timeout. I'll tell you what, Greg, why don't we keep it here just so everybody understands what's going on. Effingham, again, they got the takeaway, but were stifled on a couple of plays, then got the grounding call, had to punt, and it was a good punt from Tanner Pontius. But Highland with a couple of good runs is at least threatening here 
They are 55 yards away from the Effingham goal, and there's just 53 seconds to go before the break. But from what we've seen from this Highland offense, <laughs> you have to be wary of it if you are the Hearts. They have a bag of tricks, no doubt. One thing we haven't talked about tonight is the wind. We're sitting out in it, but it's howling from the south. If you look at the flag on the on the uprights, those flags are howling. They're moving. They're moving. And that this, that's the way that the Highland is going, too. I don't know exactly what they've got as far as uh, as far as far kicking field goals. There's a pass into the flats. That one's caught. That's another catch for Brody Lewis, his fifth catch of the game. And he got out of bounds. That'll stop the clock at 48 and a half seconds. Gain of six to the Hearts 49. Estrada on the tackle again. Boy, their announcer's enthusiastic. Six-yard pickup, up over 100 yards is Lewis. They're going to throw again, trying to go deep, one-on-one -on -one coverage. That's Lewis again, and broken up by Armando Estrada. Really good job by Armando to get his left hand in there across the body, not making, not make too much contact, and knock that one away. So really good job by Armando Estrada there. No contact. He wasn't worried about a pick. He was just making sure that Island didn't score. Really, nice job. Really good single coverage there by Armando Estrada. So that'll bring up second and 10, Highland, at the Effingham 49-yard line. 42.9 seconds before halftime. Hart's trying to keep the Bulldogs off the board. Here's a screen pass to Lewis again, and he's trying to get out of bounds, and I think he does. Minimal gain there for the Bulldogs on second and long. Estrada again. Boy, they are just going at it over here on this corner to the near side of the field. Lewis gets to the 47, so just a couple yards on that pass play. That is the sixth reception for Brody Lewis. And, just, yeah, two, yeah. And Webbles is 11 for 15 in the game. So third and eight now at the Effingham 47 for Highland. 37.8 seconds to go out of the shotgun. Webbles fakes the handoff. Now he's going to be, oh, and he is sacked, and that is Logan Heil who goes and gets him. Logan Heil with a sack. And that's going to bring up fourth down. On, that's what you love to see on Sundays in the NFL. He curled around from behind and came back and got him, and there was no way to defend that. Just a heck of an effort by Heil. Back to the Highland 49. So a loss of four on the play on the sack from Logan Heil. And before another play is run, Highland is going to call a timeout. Why don't we take a 30-second break? 8.4 seconds to go before halftime. Highland leads Effingham 28 to 14. Hart's trying to keep the Bulldogs off the board in these last 8.4 seconds. We'll be back on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate. A meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. At Highland, 8.4 seconds to go before halftime. The Bulldogs lead Effingham 28-14. to The Hearts are trailing by two scores. Highland has the football back at its own 49-yard line now. So Effingham trying to do whatever it can to keep the Bulldogs off the scoreboard here before the break. Again, Effingham gets the ball first in the second half, so they really need to try to keep this at a two-score game. 28-14, to 14, Highland out of the shotgun. Their quarterback, Webbles, takes it. Logan Heil, who just sacked him before the break, misses out on him. It's chasing him from behind was Michael Love, and then Logan Heil ended up sacking him after all. Logan stuck with the play, and boy, a big shot there. Logan Heil got him, and it is going to be Effingham football. That was a hammer. Michael Love was the one who was after him, and everybody was paying attention to him. Love and Heil got back up on his feet and came back into that play and made the tackle. So that's going to be at the Highland 49, so no gain there. And Effingham will take over the football. Two and a half seconds to go before halftime. So we'll see here. Effingham has been able to complete some big pass plays, but Tanner Pontius is not going to do it. He is just going to kneel, and we will call it a half. So Effingham manages to stiffen up and keep Highland out of the end zone right there before halftime. And as good as the Bulldogs are, Effingham has to feel okay about where it's at. We go into halftime. The Bulldogs, trail, or Bulldogs lead Effingham 28-14. 
We will come back after a break and get our halftime show underway. We'll have some statistics from this first half of play, all the scoring information from this first half of play. And Gail will run down whatever scores she has been able to track down from across the area. All that when we come back in 90 seconds. Again, at halftime, it is Highland 28, Effingham 14, high school football on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at EffinghamComputer.com. A nice long return here to start the second half. Okay, you talked me into it. Here's the kickoff. 28-14 Highland. Hearts get the ball, and they take it at the 2, maybe the 1. And now they're going to the far side of the field. Now they turn it up the middle side of the field on their feet across the 25-yard line. A nice return. And uh, I think they have in decent shape here to start this first drive of the second half. Yeah, Caden Walls has done a good job with those kick returns. I mean, he was backpedaling when he caught that one and uh, was able to get it out across the 25. So better than letting it go into the end zone, you know. Marginally, but take every yard you can get, right? They're starting to chip away at the edges, Effingham is. They they just were getting smash mouth there for a while, but little by little, they're starting to make some inroads. So let's see what happens. Pontius up under center on first and 10, throwing the flats, caught by Walls, stepped Ooh. inside the defender and got it out across the 35-yard line. Yeah, nice little move after the catch, making the first man miss and turning that into a really solid first down gain. So it is out to the 36. And it's second and two. Gain of eight. So call it the 36. And an eight-yard gain for Caden Walls on the pass from Pontius. Pontius stays up under center on second and short. There's the snap. He throws on the flats on the far side. And the catch is made. And maybe a yard. I think that's Garrett Wolf out there. And he might have got a yard. I'm going to check the spot, though. I'm kind of interested in that. Yeah, I think actually the line judge is yeah, setting that one back a little farther than I thought. He's still less than a yard away. So third down. Let's see what happens here. Hey, they gave it to Pontius. He just put his head down. He gets out near the 40, and it's a first down for the Hearts. Pontius still on the bottom of the stack. Now they get off him. And Hearts quarterback bowls his way. Let's see where they spot at 39. So he got three, and that's plenty enough for a first down. So the Hearts convert their first play of the second, or the first down uh, package of the second half to the 39-yard line. Pontius looking, flat pass out here to Walls. This time they reacted better. It is a gain, but this time from the 39 to the 41. Caden made for that one. Yeah, the return's not quite as good on that one, but you, you see if you can catch him flat-footed again, see if Walls can make somebody else miss. Not quite, uh, not quite as lucrative that time. A couple of yards on Caden's fourth reception of the game. To the 41, it's second and eight. Hearts trail 28 to 14. We just began the second half. Pontius up under center, got men split both directions. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw across the middle. Oh, and it's incomplete. He had a man there, and he just couldn't bring it in. That I think. He is Connor is Hunter Tom or Connor Thompson? I think the throw was probably a little behind Connor too. Is as Pontius was throwing on the run. I actually think they wanted cover line on that one because he was running that little slant out of the backfield that you see him run sometimes. But there was a defender with him. I don't know if I've ever seen him run that play where somebody was actually home on defense with Caden. That time it wasn't there, and now it's a third down. So they pull cover line, make a couple other changes here. Let's go. Just out across the 40-yard line in the shotgun here. There's the snap, looking to throw. Got time, across the middle. It is caught shy of the first down, I think. Going to depend on the spot. It's at the 49, and that's really close. I don't care if you're an inch or two short. you got to go for it. You know, you're, yeah. you're down, and this team is really good, and it doesn't matter. That's a first down. He finds Lutz and got just enough for the first down. Boy, what a th I mean, that's a really good throw for Pontius. That was a missile, man. Yeah, just 
threading the needle, putting it right where he needed to, right where he needed to. First down at the 49. Two set of downs for the Hearts, and Pontius stays in the shotgun here. And he hands it off to Dunstan. Look at the room he's got. Well inside the 45-yard line before they take him down. And, and you're just not accustomed to seeing it for Weldon. It just hasn't been there. No fault of his own, but uh, Highland has been able to stifle him. That time he's able to get it to the Highland 44. So that's a, uh, what, a seven-yard Seven yard from Effingham's 49 to their 44. 9.13 to go, third quarter. Hearts trail two touchdowns. Pontius stays in the gun. There's the snap. He's going to run it this time. Nice hole. Middle of the line gave him some room. He gets inside the 45 to about the 43. Yeah, not as much room there as he thought there was going yes. to be as the play was developing. They were able to close things up pretty quickly. So what you thought might be, you know, four or five yards turns into a yard. maybe a single yard. <laughs> 44 to the 43, so third down and about three. Third down and about three, and they go forward and driving and diving and getting inside the 40, I think. They have the first down. Yep, Pontius just bowled right through, wasted no time. Looks like they're going to set it right at the 40, so he gets three yards, and that's another Effingham first down. So the hearts are rolling. Nothing fancy. You, you like to see it. You know, it's a perfect way to come out after halftime. you got a pretty good game plan, and you're executing it and moving the football. They gave up three touchdowns in the first quarter. They let, well, let. Highland was able to score the first four times they had the ball, but the Hearts have really slowed it down from this point. Back to the gun. Dunstan beside him to block. There's the throw. He's got a man in the corner, and there was a lot of contact. And the hearts are screaming, and there's the flag. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's, and he probably, the ball was thrown, boy, I don't, the defender probably didn't need to touch him for that ball to fall incomplete. But uh, <laughs> you'll take the penalty if you're Effingham. You will certainly take the penalty and, uh, and uh, continue this drive. Ball was at the 40 when that play began. Is there a hold on the hearts? The flag was thrown down in the area where the receiver and the defender were. I will admit, I mean, I'm watching the fly of the ball down the off. field. Now they're walking it off. The gain is to the 25, yep, so, so a 15-yarder. 15 15-yard 15 penalty. And a first down. So now the Hearts are at Highland's 25-yard line. Pontius stays in the shotgun. There's the snap. Hand off to... Dunstan, and he's got a good gain. Weldon finally driven out of bounds, but he's inside the 20 before they slow him down. Yeah, they found some room for him on that right edge, haven't they? That play has worked pretty well two, three, four times in the game now, uh, and Weldon's been able to, to find find a little bit of room, get those legs moving, you know, turn it up field a little bit. Gain of seven from the 25 to the 18. It's second and three. Hart's first possession of the second half, and it's going well so far. Pontius, the snap, he keeps. He's turning it upfield. He gets to the 15, so three more yards. Pontius on the keeper. Gain to the 15, and that makes it second and seven. Second and seven at the 15, or third down and third one. one. Yeah, third and less than, really less than a yard. Very Just shy of the, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Just shy of the 15. 7.28 to go, third quarter. Big play here, obviously. Now, third. Tanner, Tanner ought to keep it himself, I would think. That's what's happened. They gave it to, yep, they faked it to Dunstan. He keeps, and Pontius rolls to the 10. And the Hearts have another first down. So the drive will continue. So instead of just going with this straight sneak like they did the last time they needed a short yardage play, that time they faked to Dunstan. The Pontius eventually runs it himself, picks up four yards, and moves the chains once more. They call it the 11 on the board. So a gain of four, and the hearts are rolling. Yep, about a five-minute drive so far. Again, this started back at the Effingham 27, and they have run about a dozen plays now. Highland has only lost once this season. That was in their second game. To a very good Edwardsville team. Staying in the shotgun. There's the snap. Hind off to Dunstan. Going up the middle, and he's inside the 10. Not much space there, but uh, able to get a couple of yards. They'll call it the nine, a gain of two. Second and eight at the nine. So there is room to get a first down without a touchdown. I see Connor Thompson out there. 
guy you might look for in the end zone. I think Ham has found some room in the passing game. Thompson's already caught one pass. We'll see. He's out there, you know. We've got uh, Walls out there split right. Looks like Lutz split to the left. Two wide receivers in the game, so it's a power formation, but doesn't mean they won't throw. Set up in the eye. Cobra line going out to the right now. They throw out there, and it is caught by... I can't tell who that is. It's a game to the seven or six yard line. Was it Wolf? Jared Wolf, I think, number three made that catch. To the six. So it is third down and three at the six. Hart started this second half with this drive. And they're now at Highland six yard line. Third and about three up under center this time. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw, got a man, overthrew him, and it's tapped by Highland that falls incomplete. So that'll make it fourth down. So you go, or you kick. Boy, even though you're able to get a couple stops in the first half, I don't know. I. I think you're playing from behind. It's kind of a house money situation, I think. I'd be tempted, especially since this is a long drive. You run a ton of time off the clock already. I'd be really tempted to just go for the end zone here. We know that Armando Estrada can make this field goal. And Armando <laughs> would have a career record if he made it, but they're going to go for it. All right, fourth down. There's the snap. Looking to throw. Got a man. Caught it. Touchdown, Effingham. Hearts are within one score. Lutz. Boy, he took a shot right there at the front of the goal line, but he was able to haul that in. And what a drive for Effingham to get this second half underway. 5.23 left in the third quarter. They've run over six minutes off the clock on this drive. Third touchdown catch for Andrew tonight. Estrada for the extra point. There's the placement. The kick is blocked. The kick is blocked. So the Hearts are within eight points. 5.23 to go, Beetle on the block. 5.23 to go, third quarter. It's Highland 28, Effingham 20 on 97.9 XFM. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at gecknerbros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. We are back. 5.23 to go third quarter. Here's the kickoff. Hearts are within 28 to 20 here at Highland. After Highland scored their first, five, first four possessions. And the run back up the middle of the field, out across the 25, Beetle, who blocked that extra point try, returned the ball, and he got it near the 30, and now we understand there's a flag. So let's see what this is about. It was a hold against Highland on the return. That's what I would hope. So they spot it at the 21, and they'll walk it back. I want to see whether this is a half a distance. Not quite. It'll be back to. Should be just 10 yards back to the 11. So from the 21, they walk it off to the 11, and that's where Highland will set it up. 5:17 to go in the third quarter. Well, the Hearts, a huge drive, 16 plays, 73 yards, 6:37 off the clock, and the touchdown pass to Lutz. Highland runs it, but not far. Might have got to the 15. Porter on the carry. And Middendorf, who we said is, is in his first game of the season for the Hearts and thrilled that he's eligible finally, and he's in on that stop. So the game's to the 14, or uh, yeah, second and seven. Again, they run the ball, nothing. The Hearts don't let them get much at all. You're a fan behind us who's disappointed. And to be clear on Middendorf too, the residency thing, right? It wasn't, when you say eligible, we're not talking about grades or anything There was like nothing he did wrong. Yes. There was nothing he did wrong Just in the figure, whole episode. Just figure that's worth clarifying. That is a very good point you made. Thank you. 
No gain. Still at the 14. Third and seven. Hart's defense is rising up. Third and seven at the 14. They're back in the shotgun. Wubbles ready for the snap. There it is. He's looking to throw, goes across the middle, and a great catch for the first down. Oh, good throw in, a good catch, Brody Lewis. Who else? He has been a very popular man for Wubbles and hits him again. That is the seventh reception for Lewis. To the 32, so a gain of 18 yards. Again, Estrada on the stop. I think Armando's got like 10 tackles already. So a new set of downs for Highland at their 32. Stand in the shotgun. Boy, that's a high snap. That got away. But they hand it off, and he drives out across the 35 to about the 37. Porter again. Gain of five to the six. I'm sorry. Gain of six, Dustin, to the 38. Yeah, I mean, and really good running from Porter, too, because first contact was right at the line of scrimmage, and he was just dragging people along. So the ball's at the Highland 38. There's the snap. Throwing far side, and it's caught. And Harper was not letting him have hardly anything out of that deal. Jelly made the catch, and then Harper took him down. The gain is right at the 40, so that's a gain of two. So it's third and two. Second catch for Jelly. Remember, he had a touchdown reception in the first half. It does bring up a third and two for the Bulldogs. Big play for the Effingham defense. I'd, you know, they're all big plays at this point. 2.45 to go in the third. From the shotgun, there's the snap. They hand it up the gut, and the Hearts grab him and take him down. From behind, he's to the, about the 43, and it's enough for a first down. Yeah, they were able to get the hand on him, but again, he just doesn't go down on first contact. Yeah. That second effort was enough to get those chains moved again. From the 40 to the 43, I think it was Evan Weymouth in on the stop for the Hearts there. Gain of three, and that's enough for the first down. From the shotgun, they hand off, they come to the near side, and then they turn it up, and the Hearts kill that play right about the 45-yard line. Eppenham's oh defense God. fired up. You know, they're... They're playing smash mouth ball. We'll see how it works out, but you cannot fault the effort that Heffingham has come out in this second half with. Travis Porter again, and gain a two to the 45. He's got 75 yards on 12 carries. So third down. Second. Second down, pardon me. Thank you. At the 45, hand off to Porter. Yeah. They slowed him down, but he got on his feet, and he gets into Effingham oh. territory before they take him down. Boy, Michael Love had a hand on him in the backfield and just couldn't wrap him up. He was able to shake himself free and turn that into a really nice second down game. Gain of six to the Effingham 49, so it's third and two. Third and two for Highland at the Effingham 49. They're still in the shotgun. There's the snap. Looking to throw out in the sideline. It's caught. And down he goes after Estrada takes him down. But the catch is good, plenty good for a first down to the Effingham 41, a gain of eight. They get Jelly again. That's his second catch of the possession. So Highland working at the Effingham 41 with a new set of downs. There's just outside a minute to go in the third quarter. Of course, the Hearts. <laughs> chewed up most of this quarter. I was going to say, this is just the second possession for either team here in this <laughs> third quarter. From the shotgun, the hearts don't jump. Now they shift. Highland does. There's the snap. Here comes hot. the hearts. Here's a pass, and it is caught. No, oh, it's not caught. It's dropped. Boy, Altadonna, I thought he oh had Oh, my it. goodness. He laid out for it and had it in his hands at least, but was not able to... Not able to secure it as he went to the turf. That's a tough thing to do, you know, making that collision with the with the turf, and he wasn't able to hold on. So it will be second attempt. Ball again at Effingham's 41. The incomplete pass stops the clock with 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Still in the shotgun. They've been there this entire drive. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. They run it up the gut. He's still on his feet, and he has the first down. That's Porter, and he's inside the Effingham 30-yard line. First down for Highland. The gain from the 41 to the 28. Gain of 13. Big gain. And we've got whistles and timeout. 
Timeout Hearts. 34 seconds left, third quarter. Gail, let's take a 30-second break. It's 28-20 Highland here on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate, a meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Back at Highland, 34 seconds left in the third quarter. It's a big series. The Hearts are back within 28 to 20. Well, you'd love to keep Highland off the board here. But they are driving there inside Effingham's 30-yard line. Yeah, remember, they started all the way back at their 11 because of that penalty, so they've moved the ball a long way. Looking to throw. Coming to the near side, it is caught. And down goes the receiver after the short game. Brody Lewis made the catch, and Spencer Fox came over and made the tackle, I believe. Estrada was in the neighborhood, giving five to the 23. In the shotgun, still got a man in motion for Highland. There's the snap, fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Here come the hearts. There's a flag. The pass is caught inside the 15-yard line. Now let's see what the flag's about. Heil was on a mission. He was going to take Wubbles into a different area code, but I want to see what the flag is about. Well, Brody Lewis It's a hold on Highland. So that will bring the play back. And so 10-yard walk-off. And that certainly helps the Hearts, anything to get it away from the end zone. Flag was thrown at the 24. Line of scrimmage was the 23. Now they'll walk it back 10 and set it down at the 34. So that certainly helps the Hearts, and that also marks the end of the third quarter. Been a good one, gang. Last game of the regular season. After three, Highland 28. Having M20 on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at EffinghamComputer.com. Back for, for the fourth quarter here at Highland. It's Highland 28, Effingham 20. 14th play of the drive for Highland, Dustin tells me. They hand it off and they get to about Effingham's 30-yard line. Porter has been doing yeoman work tonight for this Bulldogs team. I was going to say, I'll take a three or four-yard pickup from him after the 13 that he ran for on his last touch. He's been tough to bring down. The game again to the 30. And they're going to pass. They go to the quarter, to the corner. The pass is caught. There's a flag. So let's sort this all out. Pass was complete. I'm sorry. So let's sort this all out here. Officials are still chatting. I don't know that he got the first down, Dustin, if the play stands. You had to get inside the 20 to get the first down. The flag's thrown at about the 28, 27 maybe. And they're still talking. And the hearts are not happy. Well, I think there's just some confusion about... I hear what the PA tells me, but I... They've been wrong two or three times tonight already. Yes. So he said a legal man downfield. I don't know. Obviously, that would have to be on island. Ooh, we had another Hearts coach out on the field. <laughs> we better yeah, crowd the box. <laughs> yeah, I think there's just some confusion about what what the call is. Are they going to see no play, no foul? 
that's what they're going to say. They are taking, now they're taking the penalty. All right, now they're, they're walking the it off. Five yards. Must just been a procedure penalty of some kind. So the football back from the 35 to the 30. Excuse me, from the 30 to the 35. And oh, they look to throw, and a ball's incomplete, and Heil and Weymouth and a cast of thousands. Well, that was incomplete, but it was darn near picked off by Spencer Fox. He had the inside position on the receiver and had that in his hands and was pretty disappointed getting up that he was not able to hang on, but a good defensive play and a fourth and 17 now for the Bulldogs. They're going to go for it. They're into Hart's territory at Effingham's 35-yard line. 28-20, Island just an eight-point lead now. Huge play. Wubbles going to be in the shotgun looking to throw. Here come the Hearts. Wubbles throws deep. He's got nobody there. Now a man comes under, makes the catch, and he's inside the five-yard line, and it's going to be first and goal for Island. That ball was so wobbly coming out of his hand, it was terribly underthrown, but the receiver was able to make an adjustment and come back and get it. Altadonna with the reception, and he bails out the quarterback on the throw there. That's a big Highland first down and just a back-breaking play for the Seffingham defense. 31-yard gain, Dustin, to the four. First and goal for Highland at Effingham's four-yard line. Boy, that ball was up for grabs. And Altadonna came back, as Dustin said, and made the catch. It was up there. That was a fair catch, man. Could have been. Looking to throw. Droll to the far side. Puts it to the corner of the end zone. Throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. So it'll be second and goal at the four. And fair catch. I'm just saying that's the kind of thing it was like you got a high punt or something like that. That's how long that ball was in the air. Or they receive that on a pass. 18th play of the drive coming up. Yeah, that's uh, that's just it's so tough because again, yeah, you got the pressure on them. You you were able to get in the backfield. Not a great throw. Handoff, running it up the gut. They are right at the goal line. Are they going to call it a touchdown? No. I think so. We're going to have to run at least one more. That was Porter running it. Didn't didn't quite get in. Third and goal. The gains to the one, even inside the one. So from the four to the one, a gain of three. And it's third and goal. Third and goal at the one. From the shotgun, there's the handoff. They run it up the middle, and Porter's in for the touchdown. Travis Porter left the center. Nice blocking. He had a good hole, and he hit it. And Highland extends their lead to 34-20. to The score comes with 10-21 left in the ballgame. That is their first touchdown since the second quarter. Looks like they're going to... Kick. Now they're going to. Now they're going to kick. Okay. 34 to 20, going for one here. There's the snap, the placement, the kicks up. Looks good. Off the off and it hit the upright. No good. So he hooked it to the left. Upright. Got it. Bounced back out on the field of play, so it's no good. 10 21 to go in this one. It's Highland 34, Effingham 20 on 97.9 XFM. Gail, let's take a third. With an expanded service department, our new Express Lube, and a huge lineup from Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Geckner Brothers continues to build on the service and trust we've earned since 1937. Visit us online at GecknerBros.net. Washington Savings Bank is here for you through every stage of life. We make banking easy and convenient. Back in Highland. Highland, listen to this drive, Dustin. Good as always about capturing it. 19 plays, 89 yards, 702. Highlighted by the one yard touchdown run by Porter. Effingham puts together that great drive and then Highland one ups them. Here's the kickoff, and they smoked it to about the 10. So let's see if the Hearts can get a little yardage. They come to the middle of the field. He's looking for help, and he goes down at about the 14. Let's go, so Walls came to the middle of the field and 
That's where the progress ended. So the Hearts are going to have a long way to go here. Out across the 20. They'll sit it down eventually at the 24-yard line. So that's where the Hearts will get this drive started with 10-14 to go. Up under center's Pontius. Handoff. Dunstan. Go. Not much. Matter of fact, he might not go back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like they might be generous and give it right back. Nope, they're going to put it back a yard, I think. Lost a yard to the 23, so it's second and 11. Under 10 minutes to go. Hearts now trail by two touchdowns, 34 to 20. See if you can sneak Lutz behind the defense again. He's been able to find him sway back there a couple, three times. Let's see if you can get a big, quick answer here. Stand up under center. Got Coberline in motion, looking to throw. They about slapped him. He decides to put it on the, on the ground, and he's still on his feet near the 40-yard line. Heck of a run by Tanner yeah. Pontius. Tanner Pontius doing some good work there. A little spin move at the end to add a few extra yards. Really just a tough run, and you're, you're right. Uh, got smacked on the side of the helmet, I think, from a, somebody pursuing him. Nothing, nothing, just, you know, it was just incidental thing, but uh, still, yeah, keeping his composure. Gain to the 40, and a new set of downs for the Hearts. Nice run by Pontius. So the Hearts away from their end zone. Pontius in the shotgun. There's the snap, handoff to Dunstan, and boy, they stood him up. He does fall forward out across the 40, so he made something out of nothing. Yeah, he got a little more out of it than you thought he might after the initial contact, and that's been kind of the evolution of Weldon Dunstan, too, because I think in, in week two, he probably doesn't get those couple extra yards, but he has, uh, he has really grown as a running back throughout the season. Got two to the 42, so it's second and eight. 8.38 to go. Hearts down two touchdowns again now. So they need to be mindful about the clock as well as the scoreboard. Potty is from the shotgun. Dunstan lined up alongside him. They send Walls to the middle of the field to help block. Potty is going to throw, and he's caught by Walls out on the far side of the field. He's near midfield before he goes down, and he stayed in bounds. The official says keep the clock rolling. So the gain from the 42 to the 49, a gain of seven. So third down and a long one here for the Hearts. Ball is right at the 49-yard line. Again, Bulldogs in front of the Hearts here, 34 to 20. Adios up under center. There's the snap. He just puts his head down, still going, and he might have made it. He might have, but it's awful close. Yep, they're going to say. Yep, move those sticks. So the gain, actually, more than I thought, uh -huh. it's a gain to the 48. So they're in the Highland Territory, gain of three, and it's another Hart's first down. From the shotgun here now on first and ten, Pontius gets a snap, keeps and comes forward, and still on his feet, and he's inside the 40. Almost took out the back, you know, <laughs> too. <stupid. laughs> yeah, faked the hand off to Dunstan and just took it up the middle and just kept moving Kept moving and moving and moving and get all the way uh, just just a, a hair on the other side of the Highland 40-yard line. So from the 48 to the 40 inside the 40, the 39 and a half, it's second and two. No handoff. Pontius kept this yeah. time. They reacted much better, and they take him down for a loss back to the 40. Tried kind of the same thing. Tried to hand off to Dun or tried to fake the Dunstan and then keep it himself. Went a little bit more left to center that time and. Didn't work out near as well. Back to the line of scrimmage. Highland wants time. Gail, let's take a 30-second break. 7.14 to go. It's Highland 34, Effingham 20 on 97.9 XFM. Whether you're in the market to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, Northside Ford on North Color Drive in Effingham will find a vehicle that works for you. Check out Northside Ford's selection of cars, trucks, and SUVs today. The Giving Plate. A meal service with heart. Purchase fresh and frozen meals along with salads and wraps. We have provided over 1,000 free meals to members of our local community. Check us out at our website and order online at thegivingplatemeals.com. Back at Highland, 714 left. It's Highland 34, Effingham 20. 
getting some scores. Thanks, Mr. Woltman. After three at Bloomington, it's Muhammad Seymour 47, Bloomington 14, and also I'll kick in a minute. Thought I had one more score for you. It's Muhammad Seymour 47, Bloomington 14, Taylorville in front of Civic Memorial after three, 34 to nothing. All right, here we go. Going deep, over through Lutz, pass in complete, and that stops the clock with 7.10 to go. They tried to get Lutz out there and couldn't get him open. And a pass thrown a little deep. Not a lot that Andrew could do there. No, Lutz couldn't catch that. We've certainly seen Pontius able to make better throws now. I will say that he was under some pressure there. Now fourth and two, so this is the ball game right here pretty much. Down two scores, got to keep this thing going. There's the pass, Dunstan rather the run. He's to the 30, Hearts have the first down. Nice job, they had Pontius looking like he was going to run. They gave it to Dunstan and Weldon did a great job, got it inside the 35. The gain is to the Highland 31-yard line. Yep, that's Weldon's biggest gain of the game. And, uh, you know, Effingham has been able to, to come up with those plays. You know, they've converted, I don't know, three fourth downs and a couple third and longs to keep these drives alive. From the shotgun on first and 10, Pontius keeps up the gut, got a nice run. There's a flag. I'm guessing that's on Highland, but we'll see. Mm, nah. I'm afraid it's going to be a hold. The gain is to the 25. Flags thrown back at about the 29. And it is hold on the hearts. So that'll, that'll bring it back 10. First penalty of the game, or second, first penalty of the second half against the hearts. Comes at a pretty inopportune time. Sometimes the timing is worse than the, the total, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and that happened in the backfield apparently because not only it's, it's all the way back to the 39. So a 10 yard gain or 10 yard penalty in addition to a loss on the play. So it's back to the Highland 39 all of a sudden. So the Hearts have to go to the Highland 21 to get a first down now. So 18 yards to go for a first down. From the shotgun, Pontius looking to throw. There's the pass. It's caught. Nice grab. And it'll make it about third and ten. Let's another grab. Yeah, and that's another one where Pontius fits it into a relatively tight space and Lutz makes the catch knowing he's going to take a shot whenever he catches it. He knows there's not much room there, and he's able to show the concentration. Uh, make a seven-yard pickup. That's Andrew's seventh or sixth catch of the game, rather. 6.15 on the scoreboard as far as the time. It's 34 to 20 Highland. See what the Hearts can do on second and 11 here. The Hearts shift now, go that double stack on the right side. <laughs> no, they've moved a bunch of guys around on the line there, completely shifted things around. Bush you across the field, going to the end zone. He's got him. Is he going to nope. catch it? No, he overthrew it. Oh. Lutz, <laughs> intended receiver. Lutz had a step. Throw just wasn't quite there. Yeah. That was, that was just a weird one from the start because, again, Effingham shifted its entire line around, moved, moved some guys from the right to the left, and then they got to, they got to man in motion. It was all to set up that play to Lutz, and he just uh, couldn't quite haul it in. So it's third and 11 for Effingham at Highland's 31-yard line. Incompletion stopped the clock with 5.52 to go. Highland leads 34-20. to 20. Last game of the regular season. Pontius from the shotgun. Dunstan lined up beside him. Coming out here to block. Now he's going to run. There's nothing. Nope. Wow. Lost yardage on that play. Good defense that time by Highland. He was either going to, I mean, there were, he was either going to take a sack way back in the backfield or he was going to scramble and run right into those two guys. There was just nowhere, nowhere at all for Tanner to go. Pretty much gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a yard, but uh, there, just, there was nothing there from the start. Football just shy of the 32. It's fourth down. Hearts have to go for it. Yep. We're, regardless of where you are on the field, they had to go for it. There's the snap. Looking, looking, giving time. He's shaking loose. There's a nice block. 
He's putting it on. He throws it out of bounds. Wall oh, can't boy. make the catch. Boy, Wolf was all alone in the end zone. He was all alone in the end zone. Tanner had to scramble. He was. He got a good block in the backfield to, to get himself the time to make that throw. Wolf got into the end zone. But throwing on the run, Tanner just couldn't quite couldn't quite put it where he needed to, and it falls incomplete in the red paint down there. And the ball goes over on downs to Highland with 5.05 to go. Again, it's Highland 34, Effingham 20. Boy, that last touchdown was huge, and on such a play to set him up to score. That high, wobbly pass that gave him first and goal. All right, so it's first and 10 for Highland at their 32 with 5.05 remaining. There's the snap. Here's the handoff. They run it up the gut and a gain out to about the 40-yard line. Nice run by Porter. Yeah, Porter, he looks pretty fresh out there. That's his 18th carry of the game, but they've really spread it out for him. That was really powerful running and uh, a really good first down game. Gain is to the 40, so second down at about three. Second and three, stand in the shotgun. Wubbles ready, there's the snap, there's the handoff coming to the near side. Nice job by Heil of staying home, and he slowed it down enough for uh, Maxiden yeah, to get in say, there. Miles Maxiden was in that play. He did a good job, uh, maybe a yard uh, for, uh, for Porter there. About the 40 and a half, so third down and a long two. Down to 410. Boy, the hearts need that's a stop. The, that's the problem. That's the problem. And Effingham has all three timeouts, but uh, boy, it's it's a lot of work left. Down two touchdowns with four minutes left. Lovell gets the snap. They hand it off. They're coming up the middle. He's still on his feet. He gets to midfield before he's finally taken down. Porter strikes again. Yeah, he's kind of like the closer, you know. He's coming in to slam the door. That's a nine-yard pickup right out to midfield. Right at the 50. So a new set of downs for Highland, and we're down to 343 to go in the game. Highland by two touchdowns. Wubbles from the shotgun. They shift now on the line. There's the snap. Wubble's going to throw across the middle. Caught by Porter. He goes down the sideline. Somebody's got to shut him off. And a hard steal, but he's inside the 15-yard line before they run him out of bounds. Yeah, just the safety valve there. This Porter probably wasn't the first option on that play, but he makes it count. Gets it all the way down to the 11. A 39-yard pickup. And that, uh, boy, that's... It's feel, feeling like daggers right now, unfortunately. Down to 320 as he ran him out of bounds. Stops the clock. There's the handoff. Porter again, and he fell down. Lost his footing, and the ball's loose, and the Hearts have it. Effingham football. And coming out of there with it, did I see 25? Is that uh, London Wrinkle? London Wrinkle who came out of the pile with it. Him or... Weymouth was over there 45 as well. Bottom line is Porter lost his footing. And he was stumbling and staggering. And as he hit the turf or in the process of hitting the turf, he lost the football. And Hart regain it. And they have it first and 10 at their own 13-yard line. Well, your only prayer in that situation really was a turnover. And so Effingham gets it. And it's still a very uphill battle. But at least, at least you've got a chance. The ball's at the 13-yard line. As usual, I'm mighty impressed with the Evingham Hearts. All right, first and 10 at the 13. They're 13 with 3.13 to go. 34 to 20 Island. Pontius in the shotgun. There's the snap. Handoff going to an angle and a gain out across the 15 for Dunstan. Weldon a gain to the 16. Gain of three at second and seven. I don't think we'll have too many more running plays, though. There's the handoff. No, they do run it to the near side, and Dunstan again, and he gets to about the 20 when he goes down. Yeah, I guess you're thinking maybe you catch him flat-footed. They're expecting you to throw the ball in this situation. Instead, you put it on the ground a couple of times, but Island has done a good job of keeping it uh, keeping it from getting away from him. To the 19, a gain of three. Third down, handoff, Dunstan on his feet near the 25. Should be enough for a first down. Going to be really close. There they signal first down. That should stop the clock. 
while they move the chains. 231 to go. From the 21, the gain to the 25, a gain of four. They throw out in the flats. Caught out there, I think that's Walls. And he got out across the 25. No, it wasn't Walls, because there he is. I'm trying to pick up who that was, but I guess it's Wolf. Garrett Wolf made that catch. From the 25, line of scrimmage to the 27, a gain of two on that pass play. And now they run it again. And they're using an awful lot of time on the ground here. Dunstan, the gain to the 28, Dunstan, I'm sorry, gain of five to the 28. Third down from the shotgun, looking to throw, looking to throw, he's on the move. Adias goes down at about the 28-yard line. No gain as the play turns out, and now we're down to a minute 38 to play. Hearts are down two touchdowns. I thought maybe they'd be going deep. 28-yard line, 34 to 20, Island, and Hearts one time. Timeout, Effingham, with a minute 28. Gail, let's take a 30-second break. Here at Island, it's Island 34, Effingham 20 on 97.9 XFM. Come see all the new and exciting Chevrolet and Toyota vehicles here at Dan Heck Chevrolet Toyota, South Route 45 in Effingham, or shop and buy 24-7 at danheck.com. Effingham Computer Sales and Service is a proud sponsor of Effingham Hearts Football. Located inside the Village Square Mall, we've got tons of parts, new and used desktops, laptops, and more. Plus, we do more custom-built systems than anyone in the area. Check us out at EffinghamComputer.com. A minute 28 left. It's Island 34, Effingham 20. Marion beat Mattoon. 42 to 20 is the final score in that contest. We'll have all the scores for you on the post-game show. Talk to Coach Hefner and run through a myriad of stats. This big, though. Fourth down, Hearts need to convert. Looking to throw, Pontius crossed the middle, got a man, and he overthrew him, and it'll be Highland football. Pretty good route for Walls, honestly, but the uh, throw was way too tall for him. A lot of mustard on that one, but it's way too long, and Highland football with a minute 24 to go. And they're up two scores, so you can do the math. But Highland will know, as you said earlier, they've been in a game tonight. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's been a while since anybody seriously challenged this team, and Effingham was able to come in and do that. You know, I don't know how much moral victories really count for, but, uh, but Effingham has played pretty good football here tonight, all things considered. And Highland, classy move. They just take the knee. They don't need to score any more points. Nope. So Wubbles takes the knee. You appreciate that. Down to a minute 10 to go. And they'll let the entire play clock elapse. And the Highland fans going home happy. Yeah, go home happy. But I really think that I think that the Effingham fans should as well. You know, again, especially the way the game got started to make this thing interesting at all the way they did. It's a, you know, it's a great effort. And you'd like to have the win. You, you knew coming in it was going to be tough. And uh, Hearts played well tonight. That's, uh, you know, that's the moral of the story. Bubbles takes another knee with 38 seconds left. And that ought to be the show. Highland defends home court. They get the win. Final score in the final game of the regular season. Highland 34, Effingham 20. We'll talk with Coach after all of Dustin's stats, scores, and more on the postgame show. Back Gale in... 90 seconds on 97.9 XFM. Talk with Brad Hefner here on the post game show. A Highland a winner 34 to 20 the final score but there's this phrase about the score doesn't necessarily show how the game was played and I think that would certainly be the case tonight. Oh uh, yeah. You know I thought our I'm not sure something up. I've got no. something buzzing in my ear. I'm Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you for checking. Something, something other than Warren Zevon. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, no, I, you know, I, coming, to, coming into it, you know, knew we were going to see somebody pretty high-powered and pretty potent. You know, I mean, it's like I told the kids afterwards, you know, love our, 
love our kids, love our team, love where they're at. I mean, about the only thing we haven't really figured out yet that we still have to figure out, we get to, we just get screened to death. And uh, that's been the case in week one, and it's still the case in week nine. Uh, you know, especially when we knew they're doing it, you know, they, they put everybody to the boundary and trade them to the field while the ball's going back to where they came from. We had two weeks in a row of that. And, so that's, but as far as throwing and catching the ball, we do that much better. We've developed another tailback. You know, Weldon, I thought, uh, physically tonight, ran as well as he's ran all year. Uh, wasn't shying away from contact, was ready to put his head down and go. So, you know, like I said, it, you know, it was nice having Eli, being able to put him in, and especially in a game like tonight. A little bit bigger body, yeah. you know, bigger body than Josh with what they're doing scheme-wise. So it's nice to have that flexibility. Um, to now have him and now be able to take uh, be able to take Josh and, and rotate him through there and wherever we need him and um, you know so yeah a lot of a lot of things to like seven and one team their place uh, to have fallen behind the way the game developed with them scoring their first four possessions you're thinking well this thing's over potentially you could have thought that yeah hearts never quit yeah no that's what i love about our kids that could be you know in, in my time we haven't we haven't played them to this score um you know so um you know it's like i told them you know it's no no moral victories you know i said i guarantee you got their attention and probably some other people's attention with that score but um you know we're not in the business of moral victories but uh uh, we got another week to play, so there's no point in going in with your head down or feeling bad about it. There's a lot of really good things to take out of tonight and, and to build on going into next week. You got a team that plays hard, plays strong too. Yeah, yeah. The thing, the part that's nice about about it, I talked to them about it a little bit afterwards. It's nice that they can come over during the course of the game and they can talk to us like we talk, like coaches talk. It's it's. It's not, hey, he does this. You know, you get the technical terms with it, and and, and so everybody's able to speak the same language. And, and we've got some very football savvy kids, and especially football savvy within our system. And it's and it, it's super nice with our guys up front, and then you know even our guys in secondary like London Wrinkle. London's got to make a lot of calls and adjustments and things like that. And and uh, yeah, so there's there's a lot to like about them. You know, I've I've I've, I've loved being around them, but. Uh, Lately, kind of the way they've, they've polished themselves up and, and we've got some things taken care of. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get another week and hopefully hopefully a, a few more after that with them. Five and four, the assumption has to be that we're going somewhere next week rather than being home. Any thoughts, any hints about what well, it because might be? Well, because there's some movement that could be up and down yeah. uh, in there. It could be... It could be at Sacred Heart Griffin. It could be a rematch with these guys over here. Mm -hmm. It could be Macomb. It could be um, uh, Breeze Central. It could be. Uh, it just. Uh, it kind of depends. It's uh, the IHSA didn't do anybody any favors when they took the multiplier and and the success factor out for two years. Uh, you know, and let COVID be the excuse maker. So, you know, Sacred Heart Griffin's is right now. They're one student away from sliding down to 3A. Like, so McCombs at 606 and Griffin's at 607 or something like that. So if two big teams qualify that they weren't expecting, Sigurd Griffin goes down into 3A, you know, and it probably pulls Highland down into 4. And so because of that, there's a lot more uncertainty this year than there will be a year from now when those multipliers and success factors are put are put in there because now all of a sudden you've got Highland down in there, you've got Sacred Heart Griffin in there, you've got Rochester in there, whereas normally 4A in the south, Rochester was about the only one you looked at and there was Rochester and there was everybody else. Now you got you got some other pretty good teams in there that if you're five and four that you could end up drawing. But uh, because Highland right now is projected as the biggest and Sacred Heart Griffin's like the smallest, if there's any upsets and movements, that's why it's going to change. So. Uh, we won't probably that guy that does all that by about six o'clock when he puts it out before the IHSA. He'll probably have he most years he's pretty right. Yeah. Bottom line is we're playing. Bottom line is we're playing. We had 41 playoff points coming into this one. And that was without any, winning any more games. So we've got we've got guys plenty of playoff points. You know. So hopefully we get in there and hopefully we didn't get uh, we didn't get too beat up tonight and uh, guys are feeling good going forward and. 
uh, we'll get to uh, we'll get together tomorrow night and, and see what we got. Very good, Brett. Thanks. Always Appreciate a pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. You bet. See you next week, if not sooner. Brett Abner, Hearts coach.